Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters. Call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. Glad you could join me. The heading today is the cost of ham radio equipment. I suppose the underlying, underlying bracket should be is it affordable? Is it expensive? Well, you know, it doesn't matter what, what hobby you're involved in, the cost is very variable. If you are really into the hobby and you've got the disposable income, then you can spend a lot of money. And it doesn't really matter whether it's ham radio, whether it's golf, whether it's camera equipment, model railways, all these hobbies can absorb a lot of your disposable income. But it's your choice. But the other thing that we must also address is that, is the hobby getting too expensive? Is it stopping some people getting involved again in all these different hobbies? And I suppose amateur radio is no different. I mean, I've always been quite keen on photography and I've always had two cameras, sometimes more. But I can only use one camera at a time. The only reason I've got two or more cameras is that I can identify different purposes. One camera will be better for something else and another camera will be better for this. One camera might be better for landscapes. Uh, one camera might be better for portraiture or sports activity, long focal lenses, which is another add-on, of course. All these hobbies have got add-ons, haven't they? You get extra lenses for your cameras and ham radio. You've got a wide choice of aerials, SWR meters, power supplies, all manner of add-ons, and all these mount up. Now, if you look at one of the ham radio magazines, um, like like Radcon or Practical Wireless, you'll see pictures in there of ham shacks. And if you're a newcomer, you may think, wow, all that equipment, I couldn't afford any of that equipment, or at least not all of that equipment, I couldn't afford even half of it. So ham radio is not for me. And you could say the same if you pick up a photographic magazine. You think, gosh, those cameras, two, three thousand pounds, a lens for nearly a thousand pounds, or even audio going to go into sort of hi-fi recording a microphone for a thousand pounds. You must think, there's no way I could get involved. Well, fortunately, all these hobbies do have entrances at a much lower price level and it's the lower price level that i want to talk about because what i what i do get sometimes concerned about is is the hobby getting too expensive are we losing potential newcomers into the hobby because of the cost of the equipment now you might laugh and say okay well peter waters you're involved in the amateur radio business it's your it's your in it's in your interest to sell equipment well yes it is it is in my interest to sell equipment but if i was doing something else i would still be interested in selling or bringing income into the company but at the grassroots are we getting to a point where it's too expensive now i don't think we are there will always be those that can't afford it. There's always a level at which you just can't afford it because you've got other priorities. You've got food, you've got clothing, you've got kids, you've got schooling, you've got to mend your car, you've got to get a car to go to work, you've got to get a train to get to go to work, etc., etc. So there is a level at which you just can't afford it. But I think if we can get the level of ham radio spending to a level which enables you to sort of get yourself together a station then we should look at that and if you're a newcomer perhaps I can just give you a few pointers I, I can't give you a complete picture of all the different things you can get in ham radio to start with but I can give you a little perhaps a few pointers which will which will give you some sort of guidance now ham radio is divided into two sort of um, areas really in very broad areas um, and that's what we call HF or shortwave which covers what we call the shortwave bands which are basically bands that you cover long distances in, in uh, on a regular basis um, it's accompanied by noise and pops and squeaks on the bands and so forth and you may have, have heard that if you've listened on, on a radio the other end of the scale is the VHF UHF uh, uh, end where 
you don't get so much band noise, but uh, the distances covered are much shorter. But there's many, many challenges which the VHF and UHF bands can create for you. And of course, they've got satellite communication and so forth. So VHF, UHF is one part of the spectrum which has a big following, actually. And then there's the other part of the spectrum, which probably is really tr the traditional ham radio, if you go back to the 1920s and 1930s, the shortwave bands, where amateurs proved that you could cover great distances with very modest equipment and with very modest antenna systems. Now, if you are a newcomer into amateur radio, you, you need to understand that there's two basic forms of communication. There's the normal communication which we use for speech, which I'm, I'm talking to you with now, we're using speech, we're using what we call uh, microphones and, and so forth. This is a, what we call an analog communication system. And there is the data side to amateur radio, which means to say that you're sending data um, in very simple terms, you probably type something on a keyboard and that's received at the far end, very broad sort of brush stroke of the, of the, spe of the type of operation. But you've got the, the speech and you've got the digital. You've also got Morse code, which actually is an early form of digital communication, but Morse code is still used by uh, hams today. But if you're a newcomer, you probably want to pick up a microphone and talk to somebody. So that's the area that I'm going to cover picking up the microphone and talking to somebody, talking to friends in, in the local club and so forth. So let's cover the shortwave bands. Now the shortwave bands, you do need to spend a bit of money. It's very difficult to get on the shortwave bands without spending something like 200 to 300 pounds. You can buy secondhand equipment even cheaper than that but and it's rather an important but anything that's too old is likely to go wrong and if you're a newcomer into the hobby the last thing you want is to buy something and then find it goes wrong and you think well what do i do now um the dealers probably won't repair it for you because it's it's either beyond repair or not not cost effective to repair and you've got to hunt around for some friend perhaps at a local club that can help you out it's not a good route to go down unless you want to take a risk. The far better route to go down is to either buy new or to buy some second-hand item that is fairly modern. Now, if you're going to buy something that's fairly modern, you'd be, you've got to be prepared to spend around about three to four hundred pounds average. Now, I know there's all sorts of you know ifs and buts, but basically, if you want to buy uh, an HF, what we call an HF transceiver, or shortwave transmit, transmit or transceiver, um, then you need to spend around about three to four hundred pounds on a second hand item if you want to be fairly sure that it's going to last you a few years and not sort of collapse on you. The safest route, of course, is to buy new. Now, it's all very well me saying buy new, and you might say, yes, of course, Peter, you would say new because you're in the hobby. Well, I know I'm in the hobby and I've covered that already. But there is an advantage of buying new. Generally speaking, you'll get either a two year or three year warranty. It means to say that if it goes wrong, you're covered. And it does also mean to say that provided you buy a branded item, it's likely to last you several years at least, and probably a lot more than several, whatever several means. Um, so it is a route to go down if you, if you can afford it. Now, you can spend a lot of money on new equipment. You can spend three, four, five, six thousand pounds on a transceiver. Okay, don't switch off because that is the top end of the, of the, the sort of market spectrum. But you can spend, well, let me, let me give you an example. A, a, a radio that I covered fairly recently in a review, and I'm gonna use this as an example. It's called the G90. It's made in China. It's got a very good reputation. It comes with a two year warranty, and it's currently 449 pounds. Now, if, you look on our YouTube channel, you'll find that you can often get a discount on that. We occasionally publish discount codes. So just check on this channel for the other videos, uh, recent videos, to see if there's a current discount co count code because that may save you even more money. So what do you get for your 449 pounds? Well, you get a transceiver that will deliver 20 watts of power, which is a reasonable amount of power. 
it'll enable you to work uh, around the world. And when the bands are open, you can expect to work uh, a lot of local stations, when I say local, um, around the United Kingdom, into Western Europe, further into Eastern Europe, and into America, depending on the band you operate on. The features it's got, and I'm not going to go into detail of the features, but with the radio, you get a microphone. You get what we call an internal antenna tuner. That means to say that the transceiver will easily match um, a variety of antenna systems, aerial systems you put up. That's quite an important feature to have. And it's got something called speech compression, which actually makes your voice sound a bit louder than it would otherwise do. They use speech compression on adverts on TV, that sort of thing. So it's got speech compression. It's got digital display, a nice color digital display. A frequency readout, very stable. And it's altogether a nice little transceiver. £449, possibly with an extra discount if you check for our code. So that's a good starting transceiver and I guarantee that you get a lot of enjoyment out of it and a lot of, a lot of operators use it. What else do you need? Well, unfortunately, all ham radio transceivers, with very, very few exceptions, operate from a 12-volt supply. So you do need a 12-volt supply to power your transceiver. Now, a 12-volt supply is something that you have in almost every ham radio shack because it's the basic power supply to supply all equipment so it's worth spending a reasonable amount of money you can get a, a power supply to power your g90 for about 40 or 50 pounds you may want to spend a bit, bit more so that you can connect more powerful higher power transceivers to it so you, you just buy the power supply once and that's it do you need anything else well you need an aerial of course now if you're a beginner you can put up a simple aerial, a simple wire aerial. And I'm just going to sketch here on, 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 on a bit of paper what a simple aerial might be that you could use. You could decide to operate on the 20 meter amateur radio band. You need an aerial which is around about 10 meters long, a 10 meter length of wire, cut it in the middle and feed it with a length of coax cable. It needs to be what we call 50 ohm coax cable, not, not 70 ohm TV coax, but 50 ohm coax cable. You need to feed that back to your transceiver. That will be your antenna system for one band. Now there are other aerials that you can use, wire aerials that cover more than one band, but this is, this is really um, a budget system. So you get yourself a length of wire, it doesn't matter what wire it is really, length of uh, uh, stranded copper wire, uh, 10 meters long, cut it in the middle, feed it with a bit of coax cable, and that is your 20 meter antenna. Now, you need to adjust the antenna so that what we call you get a good match, which means what we call a good VSWR. Fortunately, inside the G90, would you believe, there is what we call a VSWR meter. So you adjust the length of the wire, um, finally, with, with a pair of wire cutters. Um, if you make the antenna uh, slightly longer than it would be, you'll find that the VSW is slightly high, which, which is because the aerial is a bit too long. Snip it either end, equal uh, bits, uh, say two inches at a time, until you see the meter showing you a good match, good VSWR, and then you're ready to go. So the aerials cost you very little at length of wine, a bit of coax cable. The radio we know is going to cost you £449, except if you get a discount code. And that really will get you on the air. You know, you may, may have read of VSWR meters, which are external meters. Now, a VSWR meter does the same job as the one that's built into your radio. The, the difference is that it's larger, it's much clearer, and it's probably a bit easier to, to use in order to adjust aerials. But you don't need one. But it's nice, I find it's nice to see a larger meter with the, the needle going backwards and forwards and you know you've, you're actually transmitting this power going out of your transceiver. It's, it's satisfying. It's a, it's a comfort factor. So, for less than £500, you can get on the air with a brand new transceiver. What about VHF UHF? Well, the VHF UHF band offers, offers all sorts of opportunities and equipment that you could choose from. But one very simple way of getting on that band to get in a taster is to get yourself one of these cheap dual band VHF UHF handhelds. Now, a handheld will, generally speaking, give you five watts of power output, and you can connect it to 
an external outside ear. Well, you don't have to use what we call the rubber duck on the top. If you connect it to an external antenna, you'll hear stations 20, 30, 40 miles away. You'll be able to get into your what we call local repeater, which means to say that your signal uh, goes to a repeater on a high point, on a high bit of ground, say, say 20 or 30 miles away, and it retransmits your signal. It means to say that you can work stations that you wouldn't otherwise have worked through the repeater. So what do you need? Well, a handheld's going to cost you less than £100. A Yesu um, and ICOM do handheld radios, cover the 2 metre and 70 cents band. And they come with, a, with an aerial, a little rubber duck, and they come with a battery and a, a, a supply to power the battery, or to charge the battery. That will give you 5 watts, but that 5 watts is quite effective if you connect it to an external aerial. Now, one external aerial which I've covered again in a review, the Diamond X30 antenna. It's dual band, it covers 2 meters and 70 cents, not overly expensive, I'll put a link uh, below. And for about £150 or less than that, you can get on the VHF and UHF bands and transmit what we call FM, frequency modulation. Same sort of um, system that they use on broadcast, except that it's a, it's a narrower system. You can work longer distance with, with what we call single sideband, but that needs a, a, a more complex transceiver. And at this point, if you're a newcomer, you just want to get your feet wet and see whether you like it or not. So our budget for the shortwave bands is less than £500. And our budget for the VHF UHF bands to get started is £150. So what does that add to? So 450 50 So for around about... 550 to 600 pounds you can have a station which covers the vhf uhf plus the shortwave spectrum what would you do once you've got that well you can actually look at the antenna system and perhaps make an anti wire antenna that covers more than just one band you can buy yourself commercial shortwave uh, transmitting antennas and likewise you might want to buy yourself uh, what we call a more gainy and an antenna on the vhf uhf bands which gives you a bit more gain you might want to go on to what we call single sideband, uh, which is a DX mode, long distance mode. But we're, we're ahead of ourselves now. The purpose of this video really is to tell you about how you could get started, what your budget can be. And I would also always, always encourage you to try and get in touch with a local radio club because they will help you, they will guide you and if you've got some problems, there's always somebody there that can help you out, which is a comfort factor again. We keep talking about comfort factors, don't we? But it is a comfort factor, isn't it? If you're a newcomer into the hobby, it's nice to have something to fall back on. You know that if if all else, if everything goes wrong, or you get you you get stuck, you don't know what to do, then there's somebody to ask. So radio clubs, they are very important in the ham radio uh, hobby. Now I did mention that some stations have got lots of transceivers and lots of accessories and the pictures of their stations are very impressive and it may make you envious. But I must emphasise that you don't need all that equipment. You can enjoy ham radio with just one transceiver, with just one simple antenna. Get a lot of enjoyment out of it, particularly if you're a newcomer. And then as your finances enable you, then you can build up, you can expand your station, add accessories and get an extra transceiver if you can justify it or you, you want to. It's all a question of what you can afford. But what you can afford should enable you to enjoy hand radio. We've all got our own financial limitations. Don't be put off by what you see with some of these top stations, which are, you know, not, not discouraging it at all. It's great to have a big station with that equipment. But I want to emphasise that you don't need all that gear to enjoy ham radio. So there we are. That's my take on a low-cost station on the cost of ham radio. Unfortunately, you can't do it for free. Well, you can if you've got a friend. <laughs> but I'm talking about the average guy that wants to get into the hobby um, and is started from scratch. So I hope it's been some sort of guide to you. You take care. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our videos regularly because there's all sorts of things that pop up on our video channel. And for those that are regular uh, viewers, thank you for your support. It's very much appreciated. To all of you, you take care. Enjoy the hobby, whether you're a newcomer or an old-timer. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.
Bye for now.